The problem with comments in your codebase is that there's a million ways to do it wrong, and only a few ways to do it right. In other words, it's very hard to write a good comment. This may sound silly, I mean how hard is it to write a comment, right? First, I'll look at the ways in which comments can be unhelpful. Then, let's see what we can do about it. Part 1. Unhelpful. Unfortunately, it's quite easy to end up with comments that are unhelpful. Let's look at the most common reasons for that. And the first one is, comments can lie. It's common for them to get outdated. Comments are like dead code. If it doesn't run, it doesn't have to be correct. So sooner or later, it will become incorrect. At the time of writing, a comment is usually correct. But later when the system changes, when the code around it changes, the comment does not. Sometimes the comment is no longer true because the implementation changed but the comment did not change with it. Or sometimes part of the code or the code is moved but the comment didn't move with it. Unlike code, you cannot unit test your comment. You cannot ensure its correctness. There's no tests, there's no linting for comments. So if your comment gets a bug, it won't be noticed. So what happens when you come across an outdated comment? At best, you spot the lie. You're slightly confused for a bit, but you can move forward. At worst, you don't spot the lie, you assume it's true, and you move forward in the wrong direction. You move forward with your solution design, with the way you write code, potentially in the wrong direction. And a second reason is that a comment can be just noise. These types of comments are not lying, they're correct, but they're not giving you any new information. They're just taking up space in the code, adding to the clutter, they're noise. We've all seen these types of comments. Show question after some time in milliseconds. Set timeout, set showing question true. If you're familiar with JavaScript, then you've probably seen the set timeout function. This is a standard library function. This is not giving you any new information because are you going to wait 1500 seconds? So no, then it has to be milliseconds. So there's no actual information in this comment. The same with this one done then show results if is done and show in question then results there's a lot more information than you can see from the code from just reading the code than the comment the comment is not giving you any extra information it's just clutter i also briefly want to look at commented code when you're looking at commented code you don't know if it works you don't know how old it is and you don't know why it was commented in the first place and there's a good chance it doesn't work anymore if it's older than a few weeks Commented code will stop working because it doesn't change. Well, the environment, the code around it will change. It has changed in a few weeks. And that means that the implementation is now invalid. You've evolved away from using this specific pattern. You've refactored here. You've renamed those variables. You need to change all these things if you want to make that commented code work again. The cost of fixing that commented code is probably higher than rewriting the code, especially if it has been commented for a long time. But even if it doesn't work, is that how you want to solve this problem right now? Have you learned nothing in that same time? Have you changed no pattern in your code base? Is this, is this exactly the way you want to solve it? No, you're gonna rewrite it anyway. So there's no value in commenting code in the first place. We have version control. Delete the code, the first rule. Having seen these ways in which a comment can be unhelpful or can become unhelpful, the first rule of comments is don't write comments. This may sound extreme, but it's actually industry practice. Many professionals, many books, many experts have been stating this, not for years, but for decades. Now, there are a few exceptions to the things I'm saying, but I would say it's true for 95% of the cases. Most comments are bad. Not all comments are bad. Comments only exist in programming languages because our languages are not capable of expressing everything. If you can express it in code, you would. If you cannot express it in code, you unfortunately have to write a comment. Next, let's talk about how to avoid comments. I've compiled a list of six different heuristics you can use to avoid writing comments. The first one, code that needs a comment needs to be rewritten so that it doesn't need a comment anymore. This is not always true, but it mostly is. We should always try to first put things into the code. When you have the urge to write a comment, I recommend you to take a step back and try and think of what information do you want to put in that comment? What message do you want to convey with your comment? And then don't write a comment, but put that information in your code instead. You could, for example, rename a variable because you've just learned that your variable name wasn't good enough. It isn't good enough because you needed to add a comment to it. That itself is the signal that you should improve your code. 
you want your code as much as possible to read like a comment, without it having comments. The second heuristic is moving information somewhere else completely. Often this means moving information to a variable name instead, or to a class name or a module name. Anything but a comment, basically anything that is code. And sometimes it means moving it away from the code to documentation if the comment is very high level. If it's documenting some solution design or some architecture thing, then it should probably be in the documentation. I took this example from a video on naming. Before, there's a line of comment and a line of code explaining the magic numbers here. The magic numbers are the numbers you don't know what they do, except there was a comment added here. You could also change this code so that it doesn't have magic numbers, but you don't need a comment for this. You can just encode it in a variable name. Another way is moving information to your type system. This is the before the refactor, this is the after the refactor. The same information is here returns null on no match, it still does the return null, but now it is encoded in TypeScript. That means that if this implementation changes and it doesn't return null, but it starts doing something different, then this comment doesn't need to be updated. This comment's very likely to get outdated right now, but if you enter minus one here, then suddenly TypeScript will complain about this. This isn't true anymore, because this is testable. Number three, the information is out of date. When you want to write a comment, ask yourself this question. How quickly can this information become out of date? If the comment is just about one line of code and there's new lines before and after the comment and that line, then the chance of it being correct is a lot higher because we see them as one thing. So often when we move the line, we will move the comment with it. Whether the comment makes sense in a new context is a whole different story, so it still might become incorrect. But if a comment is about multiple lines, then it's quite easy to refactor and change those lines of code, but not the comment. So the chance of the comments becoming outdated is very high in that sense. So especially when you want to write a comment about multiple lines of code, stop yourself. How can I put this information in code instead? Or can I put this information somewhere else entirely? And the fourth one is there is no information. It may sound silly, but very often a comment doesn't give you any new information because you already have access to the information in the code that is right next to it. I've shown the example just now of the set timeout. The function itself is named pretty well. The set timeout is a standard library function. You don't need a comment for this. If you've just written a comment or when you're looking at existing comments, ask yourself, what is the information? What is this actually telling me? Is there something new that is not in the code itself? If there's too little or no information at all, delete it. Heuristic five, I need to explain this complexity. No, wrong, you need to fix the complexity, so you won't need a comment. If you can't fix it and the complexity is really that bad, then solve it in a different way. Put a markdown file next to your source code file and create actual documentation where you explain the complexity. Complexity is, is often way more than just a comment can fix. Or add it to wherever your docs are located. Add it in, a, in an architecture diagram, something. A few comments can't fix or explain complexity. The bad news with complexity is that it requires hard work to fix. Adding a comment to explain complexity is like adding a band-aid to a lost leg. That's not going to fix anything. If the complexity is local to the file, this is usually pretty easy to fix. There's a comment here because the author of this code thought this needed some explanation because it requires some time to read it. Like the code of what and the answer of, okay, so the question, there's a question, there's an answer. Uh, this takes some time to get. So, uh, okay, sure, there's a reason to explain it. Another way of explaining it is having a variable here that says exactly that. The end state is that this if statement is a lot simpler. There's just Boolean and Boolean. There's not multiple operators going on and things that you actively need to read carefully while concentrating to understand. This code explains itself. If the complexity is not local to a file or to a function, it, if it is across multiple files, then comments are not going to fix that. You need a different type of documentation. You need probably architecture diagrams, you need documents that are markdown or something like that. And probably you need to fix the complexity on the long run by investing in test-driven development and pair programming, because that's the kind of thing that will keep complexity down, that will keep the cost of change low. And the last heuristic is if you have the urge to comment code, delete it instead. There are all kinds of reasons of why you might have the urge to 
comment code instead of delete it. For example, I'm not sure I want to delete it yet. I'm still figuring out the solution. I'm not sure I want to delete it yet because I'm just trying out things. Or we might need or we will need this code in the future. And if I comment it now, it will be easy to bring back. But there's a different solution to all these problems. Version control. You can look up the history per file. You can look up the full history, Git stores, everything. And if you use a UI tool for Git, then it probably supports inspecting the history per file. So you won't actually lose anything by deleting it. It is safe to delete. And if you really need it back, just use version control. But you probably won't need it back. Because by then the code will be so out of date, everything around it will have changed, it will be easier to start over. And that's a good thing, because you will write better code right now. And that's it. I hope this was helpful, I hope you liked it. I'd like to hear from you. Is this controversial? Do you disagree with me? Please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.